everyone, it's Kay. Welcome to my fizzy impel sentinels and spiders necromancer. This build is a medium to high budget and game boss killer that also has decent clear speed. It uses sentinels of purity for single target DPS, spiders for fast map clearing, and inspectors for support. The build is more glass cannon than tank, and summoning your minions in endgame boss fights will need some practice. After the showcase, I will talk about the key features of the build, how to summon sentinels and spiders, the passives Ascendancy and Pantheon, and gear including gems and links. In the field fight, don't curse Atsiri with punishment or forget where Shaper is. Whoops. Herald of Purity summons Sentinels of Purity, which have the highest base DPS of all minions. And the coming calamity keeps the mana reserve at 45%. Arakali's Fang raises fast moving aggressive spiders with 100% chance to poison. They are great for clear speed. Speaker's Wreath blocks killing hits from your minions because they cannot ignite. So monsters can only be killed by poison. This counts as a player kill and will poke any on kill effect such as summoning sentinels, raising spiders, and recovering life. This build focuses on scaling physical damage with Impel, Drip Banner, and Pride. Vixen's enchantment gives a second curse and triggers any socketed curse. So with self-cast punishment, which triggers Porcher's mark to get frenzy charges in boss fights. For the support minions, there are two demon harpies and one pale seraphim. They provide feeding frenzy, intimidate and maim. The Harpy and Seraphim also have special debuffs that makes enemies take increased damage. For mapping, cast Desecrate to make corpses, 
whole divine eye and use your right ninja flask. Divine eye's charging aura will kill the worms and summon the sentinels and spiders from the corpses. And the speaker's wrist mechanic will help sustain them when monsters die from the spider's poison. For endgame bosses, switch to double wand or cold iron point to focus on single target DPS. Hold divine eye and use the right ninja flask to summon the sentinels. Also cast storm brand because each hit can refresh or resummon the sentinels. Here's the passive tree for the build. Note that you need to kill all bandits for the two extra passives. Blood Drinker is anointed on amulet. Sovereignty is taken to reduce mana reserve. And there are also severe masteries. There are two sets of cluster shores. The large shores are minion damage with 8 points and 3 notables. To save passive points, only allocate Renewal and Feasting Fiends. The medium jaws are minion damage for affected by a herald, with cult leader and disciples. In the small sockets, there are Fortress Covenant, Quickening Covenant, Surging Vitality, and Enduring Composure. Enduring Composure generates Enduring's charges when you get hit, and Surging Vitality gives a nice bit of vision. In the Forge also gets, use Ghastly Eye Jewels to get life, minion mods, and resistances. The Ascendancies are Unnatural Strength to increase damage and survivability, Commander of Darkness for resistances and damage, and Mistress of Sacrifice to get extra duration and extra speed from Flesh of Rain. The Pantheons are Lunaris and Ristlatha for avoiding damage and refilling your Right Ninja Flask. Here's an overview of the gear including gems and links. This build requires Avakali's Fang, Coming Calamity, Speaker's Wreath, and the Riding Jar. Then get as much life and rest on the other items, and look for the important mods. Also note that the build uses many level 1 gems for mana efficiency. For the helmet, use Speaker's Wreath with a plus 1 sentinel enchant. The gems are Divergent Dread Banner, Generosity, Punishment, and Convocation. The body armor must be the coming calamity for the 45% mana reserve. You can get extra gem levels from corruption. Plus 1 active gems or plus 2 duration will work with sentinels. The gem links are Herald of Purity, Multi Strike, Brutality, Impel, Minion Damage, and Predator. Getting the right corruption is very difficult, so I recommend crafting first, then adding sockets, links, and the colors with the crafting bench. For the gloves, use Vixen's Entrapment. The gems are Porcher's Mark, Pride, Flame Dash, and Divine Eye. For the boots, I recommend plus 2 to Sakedic Minions, which only drops in Delve. The gems are Ray Spectre, Feeding Frenzy, Awaken Melee Physical Damage, and Maim. This combo of gems and spectres makes enemies take a lot of increased damage. The best way to play this build is using two sets of weapons. For mapping, use Arakali's Fang with minion damage, minion speed, and melee splash. And a railroad shield 
with Catherine damage taken into immortal coal and unlinked the sacred. For Engen Bosin, use two wands with extra levels for the sentinels. You can get this from plus one to minions, plus one to spells, or plus one to physical spells. One wand should have the trigger craft. A cheap alternative is called IM Point for plus three to physical spell gems. One wand has Desecrate, Flesh Offering, and Arcane Surge. And the other wand has Storm Brand, Faster Casting, and Cunning Strike. Each hit from Storm Brand can refresh or resummon your Sentinels. For the amulet, use a Hunter Warlord amulet with plus 1 fist and plus 1 strength. Anoint the amulet with Blood Drinker using 2 opalescent and 1 silver oil. You get the life recovery because of the speaker's wrist mechanic. For the rings, look for or craft minion speed to help with clear speed. For the belt, use a Stygian Vice to socket a ghastly jewel for extra life and minion mods. Lastly, the flasks are Life with Bleed Removal, Granite with Extra Armor, Quicksilver with Speed Boost, Quartz with Freeze Removal, and a Riding Jet to summon the Sentinels and Spiders. As always, big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this beer guide. Let me know what you think in the comments below and please check the pinned comments for any updates. Thanks for watching. Bye.